All right, everyone, let me know that you can hear me and see me okay and everything's all systems are go. Looks like it. Great. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me in my studio today. Welcome. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, and so I hope you're well. I don't have a big announcement today, but I'm going to very soon. I've been working really hard on a couple of projects that I'm just about ready to share with you guys. So I'm very happy about that and pleased. Um, and thanks to everyone who's visited my website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, uh, and everyone that's doing the watercolor or has done the watercolor workshop. It's been really awesome. I just have enjoyed it so much, and it's still available. It's not on sale right now, but um, you can still get it, and it's super, super fun. And everybody that's, that's doing it, it's just it's really awesome to see. And I also have to mention, if you like these free live streams, one way you can support them is to head over to the website and check out what I've got on there. I've got lessons in oil, pastel, and now watercolor. And I also have free mini lessons that you can sign up for, which are very foundational, fundamental advice about painting and hopefully some inspiration for you. So head over there and you can sign up for those free mini lessons. Also, I have to mention um, that the demos that I do today will be for sale on dailypaintworks.com. You look for, search for my gallery, Marla Baguetta, and you'll find them there probably about two or three hours after I finish the demo today. So my plan for today is to do three, probably get to three, I think, very quick, loose landscape paintings. I'm going to use pastel matte today. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm not going to talk a lot. I'm just going to go in there and do my thing, minus my music, but still. You're welcome to ask questions, and we'll try to answer some of them as we go through. But I'm just going to just try to get in, in a little bit of a groove today and just kind of, kind of paint for you, which I think will be fun. It's my favorite paper. I've picked some of my favorite kind of reference that, that if I am left to my own devices, the kind of thing that I'm going to choose. But before we do that today, I, because we have the really new cool palette cam, I thought I'd spend a little bit of time talking about my palette, talking about the way I have it organized, what's in it, just three or four minutes just talking about the palette. And so let's just jump over here and take a look-see at it. Okay, isn't this cool? We got, got the, the, the palette cam, it's great. Um, so I have my palette arranged in the same way that I learned color theory. So to, I learned color theory as every color has three aspects that are responsible for its appearance. And that is number one, hue, and that's the easy one. Is it red? Is it orange? Is it yellow? Is it blue? It's value. It's relative lightness or darkness on the value scale. And lastly, it's saturation or intensity, which is the tricky one. How bright or dull is it? Now, a lot of people say, oh, there's four aspects. There's color temperature. But if you look at color temperature, so you can divide the color wheel into cool, warm and cool, right? So color temperature is really just kind of a subset of hue. You can think of it as, em as embedded, temperature is embedded in hue. I like that because it's easier. That's only three things to worry about, and that's, that's good for me. So um, what else have we got going here? Oh, what kind of pastels do I have in here? You can see that I have all my brands mixed together. So I have my new pastels mixed in with my Terry Ludwig's, mixed in with some Giro's. Um, I, over here I have some Blue Earth, um, some Mount Vision. There's probably a few Centerlier. I love Unison, so there's quite a few Unison in here. Um, so I mix them all together all the brands, so that uh, I have this uh, grammar with the color. It's very consistent. 
and I have everything out where I can see it. If I have little boxes and some things put away in boxes, then I'm very unlikely to use it. This palette isn't as expansive as I've seen some pastelists with trays and trays and trays, but I think it does the job for me. And I, it's, it's, it's enough, but it's not too much. It's not too overwhelming for me. And I think it's beautiful. I love coming out here and seeing it every time I walk in the studio. Uh, let's talk about function of it, this tray. I built this tray myself. People say, oh, did you, did you have someone built it? No, I built it all by myself, so it's not that hard. It's lined with some foam. It's not the memory foam. It's just foam that I bought at a, it's thin, that I bought at a good uh, fabric store. So you can't find this thin stuff at just any place. You have to go to a fabric store that has a good selection. Uh, do I clean it? Yeah, maybe once a year I go through and clean it um, really, really thoroughly. I m try to cull, cull it so that I don't have too many duplicates in here um, or little tiny bits that I know I'm not going to use. I'm always picking at this and trying to, to get it more and more organized. Now, if you look at the palette, the other thing about it is you could say that some of these, well, that looks almost yellow. Could that live over here? Yeah, it kind of could. But to me, I look at it and go, well, I, I sort of want it to live over here. Um, you know, and sometimes I change my mind about that. So all of this is relative. And some hues, like the yellow, loses its color identity at a different point spot on the value scale. So when you get up here, it's no longer really true yellow. We're talking about browns and ochres and um, burnt sienna and so forth. So, uh, so the, the, it, it has, a, uh, has a gesture to it, the way the colors are organized. And because all of the colors are, it's relative, so when I, I have it organized relatively, by hue, value, and saturation. So don't hold me to anything absolute. Now I have a section over here that is neutrals. I use this section a lot because I want to have a lot of neutrals with which to, to orchestrate my paintings in. One of the things that I think about a lot is I'm gonna start out with colors that are, have more punch, more intensity on those first initial passes, knowing that my intention will be to settle those down with some neutrals or some, some hues that are like, this is a, obviously a much more neutral version of a green. And I am doing that because I find it's easier to settle down those vibrant colors than to get them back later. So that's primarily why I'm doing that. Um, let's see, what else? I guess that's, that's kind of it for now. Um, if I don't have a lot of Schmenke or don't have a lot of um, Sinnerlie in here, it's not because I don't like those. It's just because I, you, know, you, you kind of get into a, a thing of a habit and a thing of buying particular colors and brands. Oh, lastly, I don't know the color names of very many of these. I can pick up a few of them. I know this is yellow 13 unison. I know this is a blue spruce. Beyond that, I don't know too much. And what I've done is I've purchased the actual color charts from Dakota Pastel, where they actually make a swatch on a piece of paper with a real pastel. So it's not a printed chart. It's the real swatches of the colors. And I feel like that's the only way you can really, truly um, make the best purchases uh, and not, not waste money and time. And that lets me keep, and I have those charts of the main brands that I, um, that I like to buy. So that's it. And um, I think that's it. If there's any couple of questions about that, um, go ahead and ask before I get started on the, the paintings. Yeah, we have a question. Okay. Um, someone asks, asks you, um, what kind of uh, materials do you take when you go outside, like plain air? Oh, I have a, oh, I can show you if I can uh, remember. I have a, 
another set just like this. So I don't, I don't depopulate this to go out plein air. I have another box that is essentially set up. It, it is set up exactly the same. It's just a pared down version of this. I can get it out and show it to you, I think. Uh, and that, that uh, grammar is really good because I, whether I'm plein air painting, whether I'm out uh, teaching a workshop in the world, which I'm not going to do for a while, unfortunately, um, it's the same. I don't have to rethink my method, um, how I'm picking the color, so it's exactly the same. So that's really um, important to me. Also, okay. um, people are saying that they see a mirror on the palette, but there is no mirror on the palette. There is no mirror on the palette. It's a little optical illusion there. Yeah, I don't know what you guys are seeing. Maybe also, it's like the house. So. Yeah, maybe. Uh, um, also, um, people want to see your swatch chart, so maybe in the future we can do some. Oh yeah, I can, I can, I can pull those out maybe if we have time. Yeah, and maybe, okay, or maybe yeah. on a different live stream. Yeah, we could do it on a different live stream. Sure. Cool. Okay, so today I, um, I, I, I made a mistake today. I, I, didn't charge my iPad last night. And so I'm, I'm, I'm stuck with these uh, for my reference. So let's, let's do this one. The, this is the pines. Okay. Yep. You good? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do this one first. And um, I'm just going to jump right in today. I love this. I, I, it, it doesn't have a, like a super strong focal point. But um, that's okay to me. Awesome. This is um, Canada. I don't know how many of these I'll get done today. I'm, I'm thinking that I might get a few, which is really cool. I'm not going to put the road in. I do like a little bit of that snow and a little, little bit of the forest in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and get... Someone asked about a uh, Terry Ludwig heart in the... Uh... Oh, yeah, the heart. Um, uh, Terry just sent me that. He likes me. He like you, too. <laughs> he sent me that a long time ago. I don't ever use it, but it looks pretty in there, and um, so I keep it. And uh, we will get a microphone set up uh, for the questions. Uh, we don't have it right now. Um, so just bear with us. We'll uh, we're gonna buy some more of that stuff soon. Just buying a bunch of different gears. So. Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, you can't. Oh, I'm not repeating the questions. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And I'll try to yell if that helps. Yeah. Does it help if I yell? Does that work? <laughs> yeah, we're. Um, yeah, we also had. I also had a qu uh, question come in to support the other day, which I I I super appreciated. Um, someone was asking about m us doing these on the weekends, and I can't do it myself, so um, I, I like to give Kevin the weekends off, so, <laughs> so <laughs> we're a little limited um, on the time frame, so we have done it on the weekends a couple times, and we try to be sensitive to people that can't watch during the week, but you can always watch the, um, re the repeat. So I'm just playing, kind of going for it today.
this is my I still have not I still haven't ordered my darks I gotta get I gotta get gotta get with that Here's a question. Uh huh. Are you painting quickly just for this demo, or do you always paint this this fast? I always paint this fast. <laughs> I paint slowly for you guys most of the time. Most of the time, I'm painting slowly. Be and one of the um, limitations of doing the demos is that I'm, you know, when I'm talking, I'm having to. Um, Talking requires thinking, um, and <laughs> painting doesn't require as much thinking. At least for me. I don't find it's usually very f fruitful for... Here's another question. Uh, do you do value studies and color studies, or do your years of experience allow you to skip this step? It depends on what it is. Yeah, if it's something that I'm, uh, some larger piece that's maybe not, I don't feel as um, uh, uh, steady with, um, I I'm, I'm, I'm probably am going to do some kind of study. I think it's really great especially if it's some kind of complicated you know the there's drawing and more this this is yes there's drawing here but it's not it's not quite the same if I'm doing like an urban scene or something I'm definitely going to do some kind of um, sketch or study for it uh, but there are other times when I I don't feel the necessity to, necessity to do it it just really depends on what it is. Your hair's not terribly in the way, but you want to put it up? Oh, my hair's in, okay. I'm going to put my hair up, guys. Sorry about that. Forgot. And do you have a suggestion for a little more gritty pastel versus the creamier ones? Yeah, I think the Unison has got a little bit of grittiness to it. So just Terry Ludwig's, just a little bit. Uh, it's one of the reasons I really like the Unison pastels. And also, when you paint outside, do you use easels, chair, umbrella for shade, or do you keep it simple with everything in a backpack and a drawing board? Um, I, I have, I, well, guess what? I have a backpack that I get everything in. <laughs> I definitely am not into, like, having a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but I have an easel. I have a set up with a pochade uh, box and easel and all of that that fits in a backpack. And that was no small feat to, to get that happening like that. But um, I don't, I, um, I'm too old to like, you know, be trucking stuff around and breaking my back, so. Okay. How do you determine whether a color is neutral? So, um, a good example of, can you want to go to, oh, this is good. So, a neutral, um, intensity is a continuum, right? Just like value. So, this, this color is, you know, woo, it's really got a lot of intensity. So, this one, let's see if we can do a little bit of a continuum here. 
This one's not quite as intense. It's got a little more white to it. This one's got even more. And then we can go, and maybe this one's got even more white. This, one, this one's darker, but it's got even more something else. Maybe this one is a better example, this one. And then pretty soon, we're up here. And there, this one is considered more neutral. It has more white in it. So you, we can do the same thing over here. Like, put this over here. This, this is the same. These are the basically the similar in value, but this one is way more intense, right? Different hue as well. So we could do that here too. We could say that we could say this one and this one are we, see, we put them next to each other on the palette see how they dive into one another right you can't you can't really see a difference in value but this one is a lot more neutral this one is a lot brighter yellow see that so that's 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 the trickiest part of color is like the difference between neutral between um, intensity and value definitely the trickiest thing but once you get that really when you get that solid under your belt it, painting it opens up a whole world to you as a painter because you can really begin to orchestrate the color and you um, know in a, in a much, much more profound way and dynamic way. And, um, you know, I do workshops on that. <laughs> okay. This is fun. Yeah, I think I want, let's see. Oh, maybe I want this a little warmer. Hmm. Not sure. Whoops. maybe a little bright. We'll see. Here's another question. Mm -hmm. Do you like using lavender uh, as a base for your snow? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. Not, I'm not always. But it's, it's the, it's the shadow of the snow, right? So I'm, I'm feeling like actually that's a little dark. Come in there. I want my tree in the foreground here a little bit. Now now the fun part is going to come because now I get to um, I get to do some sky. There's this guy, kind of in half light. It's really neat. Okay, so now sky. That'll kind of pull it all together. And I am going to do a blue sky in this one. I'm going to start, I think, with something like this here.
like these kinds of scenes. I think they're the, the layers of the foliage are really interesting, and you get to go in there and pick out that all, all that complexity. It's crazy. Pick out the negative shapes. I think I might want this guy in here like this, just layered over the top. So you can really start to feel the layers of the foliage. These guys are in the sun. And then this in the distance. Here's another question. Do you offer a series of classes on value and intensity? Yeah, um, I do a live workshop called Color Confidence. Um, and we're, we're actually, one of the, um, our next pastel workshop is going to be um, really focusing on loosening up and, and color. And that's partly because a lot of your live workshops are pretty much canceled? Yeah, they are. Yep, for until we get things kind of figured out here, yep. It's hard to think about getting on a plane right now, so. Okay, so I'm starting to get some nice um, distance in here. And that's really that's really fun. So Carol writes, it seems your painting at the beginning looked very abstract. Are you ever tempted to stop and leave it abstract? Oh yeah, yeah, and it it does it it still has that a little bit, right? Um, uh, and it probably will. These these shapes are that way. You know, I think uh, at, at one point or another, you, you start to, to be um, in, a, in the process of a painting where you're responding to the painting, not, and that's a good thing when you're responding to the painting, not necessarily the, the reference photo any longer. And, you know, I like that. Okay, it's starting to come together. Um, I'm going to get a little more sky in. I'm going to shift to a little bit different kind of blue. Do you have any plans to do any local workshops in Portland, Oregon, our surrounding area? Um, right now, no. I mean, I'm going to have to just, I, I usually do, um, every year I do a, a plein air workshop here in Portland in the summer, um, and that's um, been canceled for this year. But, um, so yeah, I mean, eventually, yeah. So now I'm just, I'm bringing in another blue, and I'm kind of marrying what I've got down 
and I've painted really thin, even though it's, it's, there's a lot, lot going on there, it's real thin. So I have the opportunity to really um, kind of carve in these shapes and really play with these shapes in a way that's you know, really, really fun. Really design my tree, trees. Get that kind of wispy feel at the top. These ones with the bare branches. So I want to bring my, my other color, blue, in so it kind of makes sense. It's a little awkward, that shape. Let's see. To look natural. That's better. It starts to have a nice feel to it. For anyone wondering about how to clean pastels, we have a YouTube video on that. Yeah, so we that do. Out. Yeah, there's several ways, of methods of doing it. I, I and I use several methods depending on where I am and how 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 dirty they are and what I need to do with them. Let me go ahead and. Let's see, that's maybe too light, too light. Let's see, oh, that'll work. Is there a story with your bracelet? Um, no, I wouldn't say there's a story. Um, oh. It's definitely a character in most of your videos. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, people are, um, the question was, is there a story with my bracelet? No, I just like it, and just then I started wearing it all the time, and then, then when you do that, then you can't not wear it. So, no, I like it, though. Here's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, would you ever consider doing a pastel painting and then do a watercolor painting of the same scene as part of a demo? Oh, yeah. It, that's a good idea. Yeah, what, so what, let me say it again. So the question was, would I ever consider doing a pastel? Is that right? Yep. And doing the same scene in watercolor? Sure, as part of a demo. Yeah, absolutely. So now I'm starting to get that kind of depth of field that's fun in here. And some kind of fun mark making. And can you talk just a little bit about blending and pastel? So blending, so you can see that I don't um, the question was, can I talk a little bit about blending and pastel? Most of the blending I'm doing is I'm layering one stick over another, and that's the, my primary means of blending. And that, I want that. I don't want to, to be over blending. The, one of the, the most beautiful things about pastels is that they are actually these little particles, right, that are sitting up there on top of the paper. And if we start pushing on them and, you know, doing that, we are 
diminishing the, the luminosity of them by doing so. So we, you know, want to keep that to a, a minimum, really. Um, so most of my blending is just layering one over the top of another rather than um, using my finger. I might use my finger to soften an edge, something like that, but most of it is not, um, my, my intent is not to um, do too much blending with my finger. So I'm just going through and just getting a little bit of depth now because I, I, I want to go back in here in the in between my trees and get that the little light sparkling in between everything. That's that's to me the beauty of this this scene. And I want to overdo it. I'm going to So maybe we can try to do a uh, plain air live stream somehow like in the backyard or something. Oh we'll yeah, we could try that. Try to figure that out in a couple of weeks. Yeah, when it gets yeah. It's been it's been pretty nice here and so I'm I am anxious to get out. I have a couple kind of fun things I want to do plain air this year. I have in mind um, just locally. Kevin, you know what I'm talking about. It would be a surprise to do that. <laughs> but um, whether we get to that, I don't know. In the backyard would be easy. Okay, let me, I, I better wrap this up if I'm going to do one more. I just love this kind of thing. It's super fun to paint, and it kind of tees out all these little, little fun things. Let's see, I'm gonna get my. Here's a very straightforward, uh, simple question. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly is mark making? You here, there. You put a mark, and, and how do you make it? There's so many ways you can do it. You can do this. You can put it down like that. You can, there's so many ways, and every brand will make... Di so the question was, um, what exactly is mark making? It's putting down a mark, and how do you do it, and what's the vocabulary of it? And, and do you have a style? Do you have particular marks that you have a tendency to make over and over again that gives your work a particular look? And mine, I definitely have that. And, and developing that is a, has a great deal to do with um, ha, you know, developing an individual style or look to your painting. So it would be the same thing as brushwork, like in oil painters, they, they oh, th that person's got beautiful, dynamic brushwork. Um, it's the same, same thought. Okay, that's really cool. All right. Oh, great. Thank you, Kevin. Got some L's. Okay, I'm not going to futz with this too much more. Pretty much like it. So here's a 
a question. Um, do you only use new pastels for detail work, or do you sometimes use some pastel pencils? I don't use I and I I don't use pastel pencils really, um, and that's not that's nothing against them. I just don't. Um, I pretty much stick with the new pastels. You have though. You, uh, I have them on the duck. Remember you used. Them? Oh yeah, I have on the on the duck. We used them. What yeah. kind of was that, what duck was that? It was I don't it was a, I don't know what kind of duck it was. Yeah, it was. It was an interesting duck. Yeah. Very beautiful. We did a um, in the Kitty and Friends workshop we painted a duck, and um, I, I painted a duck in one of the lessons, and we used, we used some pastel pencil there. But I, I, I just don't find it necessary for me, and I, I feel like it just can be kind of a crutch, and I don't want that. So just get a little, a little more action in here. Yeah, okay. I think this is kind of cool. All right. I think I'm going to call this one good. And move on to the next one. And I don't know whether I should do the marsh. I had that marsh or the, maybe everyone can chime in whether they want the marsh or the um, other tree version. People saying anything, Kevin? Actually, let's go back to the um, camera two and see what it looks like. Okay. That. Okay, this one. Okay. Yeah, it's not quite. Let me see if I've got something else that'll do it a little bit better. No, oh, I don't have the big ones. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. That's right. But that's that's kind of the idea there. It's pretty nice and loose. I like it. I want to clean up a couple edges here. Just design these shapes a little bit, a little bit. Okay. So you want to do the marsh? Yep. Yeah, should I do the marsh? Oh, it looks good. <laughs> oh, I have one more thing I want to do. Just want to come out here. Yeah, I want a couple little, I need some lights. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I forgot that. Because that makes a big difference. All right. Great. Okay. Cool. I like this one. All right. Next up is the marsh, I think. Okay. All right. So... Yeah, let me wipe my hands off and get this other piece of paper up here. Um, I think I'm going to, so this was the green pastel mat. I think I'll use the blue pastel mat for the second one. Let me get that going. Should I leave that? Oh, here it is. Oh, we've got these sitting out here still. I'll put those back. And uh, what I tried paper to, are you using this time? This is pastel mat again. 
it's the blue it's a navy blue i don't know i don't know what they call it dark blue i think i think they just call it dark blue and you're using black dick blick art tape Th yes i'm using dick blick art or it's just artist tape The tape? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get yeah, the, um, you know, you can use the painter's tape, the blue, that blue stuff, but you know what? Um, and, and I think that's fine. It doesn't distract me. I'm, I'm fine with using that cheap tape, but just for the videos, this is a little less distracting, so that's why I buy it. Otherwise, Otherwise, I would buy that blue tape, you guys. I would. Okay. All right. I think this is a fairly boring photograph. Um, I do like the marsh. I like, you know, the composition. It's kind of, you know, interesting. But it's sort of boring. So I guess I was going to play with it a little bit and see if I can make it not quite so boring. Um, oh, one thing I do want to do is I'm going to get this horizon. I, I, I want to make sure I have a nice division of space, you know, something like that. I'm going to get this horizon really straight because water lies flat. And if I don't get it straight, it will look funny. Um, um, and then in the, in the photo where this hits right there, I don't think that's really too great. I'm going to bring it over a little bit. Just because. Um, and then, then there's this other kind of bush that's in front here. I'm going to go ahead and get that in. And there's some other foliage over here. I'm going to just tuck those together a little bit. So then there's this swampy <laughs> stuff here. This is Door County, Wisconsin. It's actually a really incredibly beautiful spot in Door County, but the, the light wasn't particularly, you know, amazing at the moment that I was out there last time I was there. So what do you do with all this foreground stuff when your photo it's a place you want to paint. You kind of like the composition. There are things that you like about it, but maybe not everything. What do you do? Get a little more action on the sky. Okay. Questions? Yeah, do you ever use oil pastels? The question is, do I ever use oil pastels? And you know what? No, I don't. Um, again, not because I think they're bad or anything like that. I just, you know, I, I do oils. I do acrylics. I do watercolors. I, you know, I just, there's just so much. And only, only so much time. I, I've seen some really amazing, great um, stuff done with them. They're a totally different animal, absolutely different animal than, than um, the soft pastels. So I'm just kind of finding my way to some color and some things that I think will be fun to get this a little bit more exciting. So I'm going to start out with some stuff that's a little punchier. Again, with that kind of intention of settling it down eventually. So 
So I'm taking the color that I see and I'm exaggerating it and adding on to it and playing with it. getting some layers in there that are something nice. Too bright. Yeah. Now settling some of this down. I think it's not that interesting. Let's see. Okay. I need to get the, some sky in. I have in mind a couple things for the sky. Questions? Well, actually, somebody mentioned um, they said they're going to miss these demonstrations after COVID. Uh, we're going to keep doing these. Yeah, we're not sure. stopping. And, uh, you know, if in the future when people go back to work, um, we could do weekend uh, live streams yeah. from time to time. Yeah, sure. yeah, we can from time to time. And actually, we are going to be, um, yeah, we're, we're not going to stop. It's too much fun. And someone suggests an online course on color, which is a great idea. Yeah, we yeah. We have color confidence. We have color comp. Yeah, we haven't actually done color confidence as an online course, so um, it's in the stack for sure. It definitely is in the stack. It's really important. Um, it's. A, Having that, ha having color confidence when you're picking something up and, and being able to actually do something with it instead of just being being able, you know, just kind of um, flying blind with the color. You really you want you want that you want color confidence. And part of it's color bravery too. You know, just I, like right now, I'm just gonna put some stuff in here. I'm just, you know, there's no reason for me to, okay, um, be timid. It's just a painting. It's just a pastel painting. It's nothing. There's nothing. Nothing on the line here at all. Now this is sort of a gray green, and it's interesting. It's very um, um, harmonizing for this little piece. This kind of color. I see this. This kind of pink tone in the sky up there just kind of slightly so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in there because I kind of see it and and then let's try it out and see if it works so here's a question um, how do you replace pastels 
Um, this person asks, um, when you tear the wrappers off, are, how, are you, how do you even know what the maker of the pastel is? So that's why I have the charts. Um, but yes, it's, you know, when I, when I know, because I paint a lot, so I know when I, when I pick this up, I, I know what this is. So this one happens to be a Mount Vision pastel, and I know it because I'm, I'm, I'm holding it in my hand, and I can feel what it feels like, and I know what it is. Um, so that, that's where, you know, uh, there's, just, there's no getting around some mileage and experience with the, with the media. Um, the, whoops, ooh, I just dropped that one, too. Um, I don't like that I dropped that. Um, so yeah, th that is an issue, even with having the charts. Oop. What? Okay. Um, let's see. Just gonna get this in here. And also, uh, where did you study art? I. The question is, where did I study art? I went to a wonderful school in Southern California called Art Center College of Design um, way back when. And uh, I studied illustration. There's a, it's a school very well known for um, automotive design and industrial design, um, graphic design, illustration, photography. And so it's um, very... Um, um, very good school that where I, I got a very foundational education in art just really all the all the like really heavy-duty stuff um, head head drawing head painting um, 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 uh, perspective uh, you know all that all that stuff um, was uh, you know a big part of my art education so color theory um, Judy Crook was my color color teacher. She is amazing. Um, so, yeah. It's a great school. It still is a great school. I want to get this in my hand. And I worked as an illustrator for many years before I um, started painting the landscape. So I've been, I've been painting and drawing for about 50 years. Hard to believe. And I have been, um, I have been teaching most of that time too, which has been really great. Um, teaching has been a big um, part of what I've always done. I, I really enjoy it. Um, teaching, teaching makes you walk your talk. Teaching makes you um, have to verbalize this thing that we're doing that's so crazy and messy and nonverbal and interesting uh, so always loved it so now you can see this this um, setup that I had that was very um, neutral uh, very uh, chromatic is getting slowly neutralized Can you remind everyone where the photo was taken? Yes, the um, it, this is Door County, Wisconsin. And I just want to try to get a flavor for that, this marsh feel. Kind of abstract. It's turning out kind of abstract. And um, I think what I want to do now is I want to start hitting a few things a little stronger, kind of pull it together a little bit. 
So back here. So a lot of times I see students that have work that's, you know, they've got everything kind of middle, middle, middle value, kind of like I do, and, and they, they, it's like, oh, it's yuck. And, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is yuck. It is kind of all, but I always feel like if you're in the middle, that's a pretty good place to be because that's, Especially if you're if, with pastel, if you're thin, um, you can pull um, pull the lights out, pull add darks. So it's not it's not a bad thing. And just to clarify, you've been doing art for fifty years. You haven't been teaching for fifty years. Yeah. <laughs> been doing art for 50 years. I've been teaching a long time. I've been teaching 30, 30 some years. Yeah. I'm old. So yeah, but I have a picture of me with a paint box when I'm when I was eight years old. So all right, so now we're getting some lights in here. And get bringing this guy to life a little bit. I like that. Someone is commenting about rich, Richson hand rolled pastels. That they really, they really like those pastels. Oh, I've never, I've never tried those. I've never, yeah. I've, um, someone's commenting about Richardson hand, Rich, I think it's Rich, Richardson. Richardson, yeah, Richardson, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I have not tried those. And it's not because I wouldn't, it's just I haven't, you know. You only have so much time, you know, for things. Let's and there's see. a little discussion on the group about sitting versus standing. And if you can't stand, might as well sit, no problem, no big thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I like to stand just because I feel like it's a little more dynamic, but there have been times when I couldn't, so, you know. And I, and I actually have been really, um, really enjoying doing the watercolors and sitting at my kitchen table doing them. It just There's something just very sort of quiet and meditative about that that's, you know, I really also, you know, really appreciate, so... Yeah, I don't think there's. You could, you the the point is to do it. If you can't, you know, really. So. And the, the point is not not to do it perfectly. The point is to do it. So I I think this is kind of kind of fun. Some fun stuff. Get, and just pop that a little bit, right? There's a question about workshops. Uh, do you ever do a? Would you ever do a portraiture pastel workshop? <laughs> would I ever do a portraiture? Well, I don't do very many portraits, so for, I do figures, but I don't do portraits very often. Um, I can, um, but I don't. Yeah, it's not some, it's not my speciality. So there's so many good painters. Um, there's uh, um, um, Bill Sh um, Schneider. He's really good. Um, nice guy too. 
Um, yeah, so it's fun. This kind of thing, it's you just find find your way to it. I really like that in a painting. I'm not, you know, it's not quite quite there, but I'm getting there. Trying to get something a little more interesting than than what's happening here. I think it would be worthwhile to get a few more darks in the foreground. Sandra says that you're not old. She's 83 years young. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. 83 years young. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so that's, that's great to be painting and watching whatever it is that you can do, Sandra. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah, so I, th I think that's starting to get some interesting stuff here and there. And you are still using the photo as a reference, correct? Well, yes. I'm using the photo to um, give me some ideas. So I'm definitely making a nod to the photo. But I'm not um, bound in any way by it. I'm, thank you, it's kind of helped me out, but it's not. Just want to give it a little more. Pizzazz, maybe, here and there. I like all of this a lot. It's grasses without saying grasses. It's, it's abstract layers. It has a nice atmosphere to it. So that, that kind of thing is good. And just to clarify, that very um, large sort of square pastel you're using, the, the kind of uh, lavender color? Yeah. That is a Terry Ludwig? That is a Terry Ludwig. Yeah. Would you say that color is really a light blue neutral, or what? Where would you really put that color? 
this color. It doesn't have a lot of um, chroma. It's very, it's almost, so if we look over here, it's, 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 a, it's actually in my blue section, but it's leaning towards lavender. So it's, you know, over here, it's, it's warmer. So um, and it's very light. You know, if you look over here, it's very light in value. Um, um, so, but it doesn't have a lot of chroma to it. And you do not choose your colors beforehand. You just go right into the palette. Um, typically, I don't choose my colors beforehand. There, there would be exceptions to that. You know, I don't, I don't have a formula to any of this um, at all. Um, I have a process that I think is effective and helpful, but I don't have a set formula. Because if I have a set formula, then it gets really old really fast, it gets dry, and it's not, it's not what I, where I want to be. So I don't, um, so on any given day, you know, I might come out here and decide to do something, you know, really different. It, it just depends. And I think that that's right, because I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a painter. I'm, you know, I'm not, um, I'm trying to have it be, I'm trying to always learn and get better. And I think that's the way you do it, by pushing yourself to do, do it differently, always striving to do it differently. Okay, I don't know whether I'm going to have time for one more or not. I can start it. Last time we went a little bit longer than this, so. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, you can. Cool if you can get three done. Yeah. Okay. And you want I like it. Um. I, I think that's a little hot, that little, that blue section right in there. So I think I'm going to settle that, I mean the pink. I'm going to just settle that down. I mean, I like the value of it, but I think it's a little popping out a little much. I think that's better. Okay. All right. Some, uh, oh, and now I've got a big pile of stuff going here, but that's okay. That real quick, so yeah, I don't know. We have a Mat, but it, I think they're in the drawer. See, it says sizing mats. The the white flat file, white flat file, bottom drawer sizing mats. Yeah. Yeah, they're there. Oh, they're so dirty, but <laughs> I have to cut some new ones. Ah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's neat. Okay, good. 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 On a roll. I like it. Okay. I love it when you get some mileage in. Feels good. Okay. All right. I'm looking for my piece of paper, though. I would look at the camera, but I <laughs> I can't because I got to find my piece of paper. Here it is. All right. Here we go. I'm going to move a bunch the of next stuff. One you're do is trees. It's the It's the trees, yeah. So we did we did marsh, we did pine. Yes, so it's the upright trees. It's a vertical. I think it's going to be okay on the camera. <laughs> the little kids. <laughs> all right. Is that okay? Yeah, Is that all right? Uh, all right. Trees. We're doing trees. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Oh, this is, boy, I gotta, I'm gonna have to work on this. This is this is this is kind of a lot. Oh, a lot of work. All right. I'm going to keep this super super loose. 
the little girls yelling in the background. So what's cool about this is I, the opposition of these trees at a little bit of an angle, which I've kind of exaggerated, and then these that are, that are straight or straighter. Shift the baseline of these a little, and then they get to splay out just a little bit. And then I've got a little bit of a, and there's snow. I like this foreground. I like the this the pattern that the snow is kind of creating here. And then these are kind of fun and crazy back in here. So for this one, we're just going to do a few uh, a lot fewer questions, and we'll let you kind of flow a little bit. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good to me. Okay. Now see if I was really just painting, I'd have my music going and Are you looking for something? Yeah, I'm looking for the Vixia flower. The, uh, the Vixia flower. I th think it's up up in the cabinet. Again, are we going to die? it. So now I'm just mixing in Here's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Is Kevin always this easygoing? <laughs> Is Kevin always this easygoing? Uh, no. No. No, not really. No, not really. There's a lot of technical no. difficulties that, that stress us all out. Right? We, we <laughs> no, you're pretty easygoing, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'd, 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 we'd do pretty well. It's a pretty good work team. I'd say. We 
Is that your wife asking that question? No. <laughs> no, it's not Roger either. It's, uh, let's see who it was. But it's Kath. Kath oh, Kath. oh, buddy. <laughs> she, she knows. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. She does. That's funny now. I know the answer too. So, <laughs> I mean, sweet. No, you. Premier Pro. Yeah. No, that won't. That won't make everyone happy all the time. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely have our moments of. But the good thing is, we're we're doing something really fun and. There's no nothing on the line, and it's mostly really, really, really great. Rarely do we have moments of strife around here. I really like this foreground with the snow, the little bits. simpler got it going a little little crazy oh, that's better oh, that's too I think that's too bright ah still too bright Let's see. Well, all right, I'll just go with that for now. All right, I'm getting kind of stuck here because I'm having fun doing it. Which is okay. The the time the, the the time that you really get into trouble is when you get stuck when you're like stuck and you're struggling and not liking it. That's that's the time when you really know you have to move to move away. Step away from the canvas or the painting. Maybe not quite so bright. Another question. How much coffee did you have today? <laughs> Who's asking that, that? That's from Allie, so she's kind of being wise guy. Oh. I, I have my regular fill. Allie. <laughs> well, this one is definitely coming together quick. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, let's see. How about, how about 
some a little bit more color in here. I want Always a wise guy in the crowd, Allie. <laughs> That's good. I miss everybody. I miss being able to see everyone. get some of these create this craziness in here and then I'm going to knit the sky in around all this kind of fun stuff kind of get just some things going there's some get the, some of these layers There's all this crazy stuff in there okay sky gotta get the sky in and then we'll kind of pull it all together And um, just a question about your vertical easel. That is to so the dust will drop into your dust catcher, correct? Yes. The the reason I'm working vertically primarily is to keep the dust from getting airborne. The idea is to get have the dust go pr predominantly down. Of course, you know some some does kick up depending on you know how you're working and whatnot. But the um, the thought is to have the, the most of the dust going into this catch right here. So now I'm just getting warmed up and we're almost done. <laughs> 
feel like and now now I'm now I'm gonna get on a roll. Should stay out here and paint the rest of the day. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to wrap this one up. You can go a little over, maybe get it tightened up a little bit. Get the, just a few more of these shapes. I like it though. It's pretty fun. got to take a little time to pick out some shapes in those sky holes. Little thought to the design of them. I want a little bit lighter value right here. Gives it a little bit more of a focal point because this this it's kind of crazy. It's got a lot going on. So, f in terms of a focal point. So, um, all three of these demos will be available on daily paintworks. Right? Yes, yes, they will. And you know, got to give me an an hour or so. Get them signed. Get them any little errant marks. Get them and get them photographed and get them up there. So as we wrap it up, we'll just do a couple more questions just to, okay. um, yeah. a few came in that are kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, do you ever uh, get requests for illustrations and do you do that anymore? I, I haven't in a long time. No, I don't. No. <laughs> no, I don't do it. And I, I, w I wouldn't do it. Just... It's not fun for me anymore. Let me get the rest of this just so you can see a little bit. And do you have a reason for doing the sky last? We had a couple questions. That yeah, yeah, I do have a reason, especially in this piece, because I want to knit the sky around. You know, I put in some color. I like blocked in some color, and I've and I've got some some of the little branches. And by doing the sky last, I get to um, pick out these negative shapes. And they ha there's a little color there. And if I, if I did it the other way around, uh, we certainly wouldn't want to get the, those, uh, all of the color and all of the marks over the top of sky. That would, you know, I, 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 I typically want to put the least amount of product on the, on the um, paper. So I'm going to try to do the sky. Um, especially in this kind of case, in this kind of scene, kind of last. Not last, but um, have the opportunity to get those negative shapes, which I think worked out pretty nice in this case.
Do you ever mount your paper on a gator board? Do I, the question is, do I ever mount my paper on gator board? No, I don't. Yeah, that's cool. It's fun. All right, let me. I'm going to do a couple little final marks here. Call it good. Yeah, this turned out fun. I'm just want that little little pop right there. A light psh, coming streaming in. I like how in these kinds of scenes it feels like the light's dancing in between. So like it's coming forward and hitting, coming, coming and hitting here. And then it's going back in between and just dancing all around. It's pretty amazing. And back there. And then it just pops in right there. It's like a little mystery, a little magic. Okay, I think, I think I should be done before I do too much. So I think that's it for today, you guys. You put um, the, uh, yeah, I'll put the mat on it. And um, make sure you go visit uh, my website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com. Um, we're going to have some really fun, exciting announcements really soon. Um, yeah, this one turned out fun. And um, so uh, watch for those. Um, we'll be doing another live stream. Um, I, I imagine, again, next Thursday, if all um, goes well. And um, in the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of your week, great weekend, and um, stay well. OK. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Make sure that you um, like and subscribe to my channel. That really does help me. And um, I appreciate it. OK, bye.